Hi, Chris. It's me. I'm sorry to leave a message so late. I suppose I'm calling because... Well, I wanted to, to thank you, really, you know, for the card. I'm not sure who told you. I mean, maybe I should have told you, but it was so sudden and with things the way they are, well... We couldn't have a week. I mean, it was barely a funeral. It's been a strange time. Anyway, I'm rambling now, but I, I just wanted to say thanks. Um, I appreciate you thinking of me. Chris, it's me again. Look, I know things are sort of weird between us at the minute, but I've, uh, well, I've had a lot of time to think. You see, I've been staying at my dad's house, just trying to sort out his stuff, but it's impossible. I mean, what to keep, what to throw away. Someone dies and every piece of shit they own suddenly becomes sacred. It's paralyzing. If my mom was still here, she'd tell me what to do. At least they're together again now. Doing each other's head in. I think that's what's hard about this, about what I'm doing here, because this was their home, it was our home. This is where I grew up, and I'm supposed to just box it away bit by bit until eventually it disappears. I'm worried I might disappear, Chris. I know that sounds mad. I've been having a fair few mad thoughts lately. Either it's me. I'm sorry to call it this hour. I mean, I know it's late. I just. God, I don't know how to say this. I think there's someone watching me, Chris. I've never seen her before. Perhaps if there'd been somewhere else to go or something else to do, I wouldn't even have noticed her, but there wasn't. And I did. There's this girl across the street. Dad's house looks directly in the house, number 13. She was sitting at the window today, just staring right at me. She's watching me. I know she is. It's been three days now, Grace, and she's still there. She's even wearing the same dress, this yellow dress. I don't think she's moved from that spot. And she knows I can see her. Grace, something terrible's happened. She was there again today, the girl in the yellow dress. She was there staring back at me again. It was like she was fixed to the spot. And I realized, I realized what it was. She was dead. There was this scarf around her neck, like she'd been, like someone had, and she was dead. You have to believe me, Chris, because nobody else does. Mr. Kells, I understand this is a very distressing time for you, but the house across the street, number 13, there's nobody there. One of our officers checked the flat and it's empty, Mr. Kells. It's been unoccupied for years. And just like that, she was gone. Hi, Grace. It's me. Listen, I'm sorry. I haven't been myself lately. I haven't been sleeping. I've been drinking too much. She wasn't there. The girl. I know that now. She wasn't real. She wasn't even a ghost. No. She lived in my head. I'm not sure why. All I know is I need to get out of this place before I lose my mind completely. And I've missed this, Chris. I've missed you, actually. One day I may be brave enough to call you up and tell you that. Instead of just rehearsing what I'd like to say in my head like a coward. Yeah, I just got the keys today, thank God. I mean, I've been in limbo for so long. Well, we all have, I suppose. She's been lying empty for years. 
some problem with the deeds there. One second. Number 13. Lucky for some. You know, I think I'm going to be really happy here. <laughs>